Welcome back guys to a new video here on the channel. It's been a little while, but uh, now I'm back, I guess, for a few videos. So this is gonna be like a little mini series. And this is the first video of that, obviously. So the thing is, I want to do something with the Raspberry Pi, which you're going to see in the next video. So I had to basically free up my Raspberry Pi. Right now it's still like a VPN for me, so I can connect uh, to my home network from wherever I am. But the Raspberry Pi is sitting on top of my powerful enough server with ESXi, so I thought, hey, let's just create a new virtual machine, set up a VPN in there, and uh, get this thing going. So on the Raspberry Pi, I was using uh, just plain OpenVPN, which is pretty great. I, I love it so far, like I have never had any issues at all, but I uh, found another bit of software which actually does use OpenVPN in the back end, but has like a nice web, uh, web UI for well, easier creation of uh, VPN connections. So we're going to take a look at that now, uh, the installation and setup. Okay, so this is now the installation part of the video. You just start on going to pridoodle.com or however you're supposed to spell that, or you just click on a link in the video description and then you have to scroll very far down because this is a pretty full site because there's a lot of stuff here apparently. Then you just click on whatever operating system of choice you have or what flavor of Linux for me there's Debian 10. And then we apparently just have to copy over a bunch of commands here. Probably not like that, maybe more like I also... Now this is supposed to be two different lines, isn't it? I literally have no idea what I'm doing here to be completely honest. I also haven't installed this beforehand, so this is a uh, good for this operation. GNU, that's what you mean, so one of them is required for this operation. Okay, then let's do like a sudo apt install. I don't know, GNU PG2 seems good, why not? Let's just go for that. This is super not going to work. Okay, this at least worked, and let's do uh, the next command here. And then just do a sudo apt update. And then we can install Pritunal and also MongoDB. Why has MongoDB server no installation candidate? I have no idea. Probably because this up there uh, didn't really work that well, huh? Dependency problems prevent configuration, blah blah, MongoDB org on libcurl. For yeah, then just, I don't know, maybe install that. Maybe that was the reason why uh, it wasn't working. Is it now a uh, pseudo service? That is all. We should have MongoDB in here now. Yeah, we don't. Maybe we can do like, I don't know, start. Uh, maybe just, I didn't want to do that, but whatever. I wanted to copy that, man. Now that at least works. And then we could theoretically start both of them. Yeah, they, they use also systemctl here. I don't know why. Like, if service is better or systemctl is better, I don't know, but... I'm just more used to using uh, service. Yeah, also this one doesn't know about MongoDB. So something definitely went, went horribly wrong trying to get MongoDB in here, that's for sure. Uh, maybe MongoD. That definitely looked a little bit better, I think. Maybe this is just now Mongo. D and not MongoDB. I mean, on my system, I also use MongoD and not MongoDB. Okay, maybe we should just also just like, I don't know, restart both of them. So everything, uh, eh, yeah, MongoD restart. So come on, you can do it. I believe in you. And yeah, that looked pretty well. So now we should be able to go onto the web interface. And I am going to accept the risk. And there we are. We can log in with Pritunel. Now we need the, the setup key, run sudo something setup key. Maybe we should uh, do that on the actual system though. 
uh, like that and then enter our password here again and now that is our key I should maybe censor this out I don't know probably a good idea yeah yeah I'm uh, okay now Pritunnel default password. Yeah, this is all like super safe. Oh, yeah, that's a secure password. Okay, so there we are. We can now do our initial web setup, which I'm going to be doing now, real quick. Okay, now I uh, did some initial setup or something. I don't know. At least the thing that was asked of me. Yeah, and the settings that I should blur or whatever. Um, yeah. Now let's go through here and try to connect or something. So we have no no organizations, no users, and no servers. Maybe we should add an organization first. Yeah, let's just name that. I don't know. Default. I don't plan on like running multiple organizations because that is I think a little bit overkill for what I'm trying to do. Then I use this organization. Okay. Add user maybe. Okay. Okay, now we have a user here for me. And we can disable disconnect user. We can Organization must be attached to server to download profile. Organization must be attached to server to get temporary profile links. Yeah, it seems like we now need a server here as well. So let's just add a server. Default, I don't know. Uh, also enable, enable that. And yeah, I don't know, enable Google Authenticator for something. Oh, now we have a server here. That's uh, brilliant. Status offline. So we have an organization attached. Okay, let's attach an organization default. Yeah, that looks good. Now we can start it. Okay. Online uptime. Basically nothing. Zero out of one users online. Zero devices online. Network, blah, blah, port, multiple devices. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. Um, no bandwidth graphs. Oh, damn, nice. Oh yeah, that goes pretty far back. That's cool. Um, now I should forward this port on my router and then I can report back. Okay, that is now set up as well. So now we can probably download our... Oh, we can stop by getting the two-step authentication key, which uh, I should probably also blur out. And I can add that on my phone. And... There, I now have that as well. Great, close that up. And now we can download our profile. Now what I could probably do is I could do this directly on my phone. That might work actually a little bit better. Okay, great, turns out 1Password completely overwrote my stuff here. So uh, let's <laughs> save that all again. Oh yeah, turns out that uh, the iPhone can actually also untar. I mean, which kind of makes sense, as it's all kind of Unixy. But now I have this downloaded, and I can hopefully now import that into OpenVPN. I could actually also record my screen here, probably. Okay, now this is recording here, OpenVPN. So this is my uh, existing profile in there. I can add a new one. Share. Uh, and OpenVPN. Okay, that looks good. Add that. 
Oh man, hopefully this took the correct one. Definitely didn't take the correct username. One password is great, but sometimes it's just interesting. Uh, let's rename this here as well and just call it how I called my server. Okay, so save. And now it's time to disconnect our Wi Fi. <coughs> And then connect this. <coughs> uh, I should have probably saved that. There's no one some code here. Uh, I know that I set this code, but I kind of already forgot that, to be completely honest with you. All oh, right, now I saved that. I hope this is like uh, carrying over or anything like that. Okay, now this should theoretically work. Paste that in. Is that doing anything? I have no idea. Let's take a look here at Pritunal dashboard. No one is online yet. Reuse auth failed challenge OTP code. Ah, use authentication failed. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, this used the completely wrong username again. Okay, let's try again. Enter our code. Or maybe we have to enter like our two factor authentication code in there. I don't know. That's also worth a shot though, so let's just try that. Paste. I hope that was quick enough, but I don't think that it was. Use authentication failed. Yeah, let's try that again. Okay, you know what? What we can try as well, we just can like re-download the entire file. Great, now it just says use authentication failed without actually uh, bringing me to where I want to go. This is brilliant. Oh, too many authentication attempts. I think I just uh, did a thing. Great, I think I just completely broke it, yeah. Okay, so a few weeks now went past and it's uh, working now basically. So I did change some things around, I, I read through through things. So basically I was a bit confused about the, uh, the password and this code that I had to enter all the time. Basically the password is just the, the pin that you set on the on the web interface. And this code that you then have to enter each time when you connect, well, that's just the code from uh, Google Authenticator. Now I figure this out, now it's working properly. So another thing that I now did is I also moved the no IP client over to the VPN uh, VM server thing, I guess. Um, yeah, so this is uh, for no IP, which is dynamic DNS uh, service. So this basically lets me get the IP address of my home network all the time, because, well, that's dynamic, so that changes potentially every day and you don't want to like edit that it's kind of impossible to do that every day right so that's what doing dns is for for like more explanation how this all stuff works i can recommend you to watch the uh, video where i installed the raspberry pi with vpn uh, which is linked in the video description down below but so far that uh, is it i'm pretty happy with the new setup thank you guys for watching see you all very soon in the next few videos here until then have a great time see you all then bye bye